Round two of the Gashimov Memorial saw the crunch encounter between Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. We join the game after 16 moves, Carlsen with the white pieces. It's been a fairly quiet start. Nakamura played the Slav defence. You can see this familiar pawn structure here. Carlsen didn't play the most critical line, but nevertheless has a pleasant position and a slight advantage. You can see that just because he has slightly more space in the center. He also has this bishop. Now, not significant at the moment. You can see the bishop is blocked by the pawn, but the problem for black is that if he ever tries to make a pawn break, then that could open up the diagonal for the bishop. So, all in all, I think just an easier position for white to play than black. Knight e1 played by Carlsen, so he's perhaps looking to push the knight from the centre and then maybe later on advance with e4. And black has something of a dilemma here. Do you advance pawns or do you just sit tight? Well, sitting tight is not really Nakamura's style. So first of all, he preempted f3. Nice move from Carlsen pinning the knight. But then Nakamura played pawn to f5. Now he thought quarter of an hour over that move, and I'm not surprised. So we have a very typical Dutch stonewall pawn structure now. But of course there's no attack for black. What Nakamura is doing is trying to gain a bit more control over the centre, over this square. But as I often say when I'm talking about the Dutch defence, there are negative, there's a downside to playing the f-pawn forward. It can weaken the seventh rank and this diagonal too. Okay, let's see how this played out. Knight d3, good move from white, controlling these important squares. And a bishop b4. Now this move I like very much. You can see maybe the bishop can come here, maybe it'll drop back here and after f3 come out to g3. So this bishop is starting to have an effect on the game. Okay, Nakamura avoids, steps out of the pin and controls the a5 square. And now I was expecting just f3 here, which I think is reasonable for white. But very interesting move from Carlsen. Again, after some thought, 13 minutes he spent over this move. Now the point is that sometimes he might be able to exchange on d5 and black won't be able to recapture with the e-pawn because then the f-pawn will be loose, of course, after this exchange. So it's a clever move. Also, the queen is looking at potentially to move into these dark squares as well. Anyway, this move induced the exchange on c4. And I think that's a little victory for Carlsen because now he has uh, a majority of pawns in the centre of the board. That's certainly desirable. But still, black's position extremely solid. You know, difficult for white to make progress here. Nice move from Carlsen. So he's advancing his a pawn. What he'd like to do is put the a pawn here control these two pawns. So from a positional point of view it's understandable that Nakamura advanced the A pawn but of course this could be vulnerable. So he's played his pawn to B6 to support the A pawn. Um, I mean white at some point might like to advance. Now at the moment I think that would be met by b5 and, and probably black is okay there. But you know that certainly becomes uh, an idea later on, particularly after this move, queen g3. If for example the queen moves to the side then c5 is an excellent move undermining the support for the a-pawn and the bishop is very well placed on e1. So Nakamura exchanged. And again, this is a threat, so Nakamura moved the rook to the side. F3, okay, steady move from Carlsen, controlling these squares, and rook b8. Now I thought Carlsen's next move I think is very interesting. 
you know, he could have squashed this b5 break with rook b1, um, just controlling the b5 square, and, you know, black can maybe drop the knight back to defend b6, and, I mean, it's not tragic for black, but still, it seems to me that white is in control there. But instead, he, he just played rook c2, and Nakamura was starting to run a bit short of time, so it's as though Carlson wanted to provoke, or, or let's say just allow this move b5. I think Nakamura has to do this now, now sooner or later actually, because you know there was perhaps a plan of even doubling on the a file and playing this. So it's now or never for Nakamura. I think he's correct in, in playing this move. Now, if the pawns are all exchanged, then, well, this a pawn could be a distraction for white. And, you know, maybe there's a chance to bring the rook here and, you know, look at this pawn on e3. So black probably has enough play there. But Carlson was having none of it. He played his knight in c5. What a fantastic square. Hitting the pawn on e6. Now black would like to defend this pawn with the king, of course, that's not possible. So, slight problem for black. You know, he doesn't want to bring his rook back to defend it because then this pawn uh, could simply be taken by white. And playing the knight back to d8 is somehow extremely unappealing. So Nakamura exchanged on c4, but now we can definitely say that white has the superior pawn structure. Can see these are potentially weak, and this one isn't isn't uh, wonderful either. Okay, so knight d5 was played, hitting the pawn on e3. Bishop d2 defends, and now, okay, I think Nakamura had to play e5. If he just brings his knight over, you can see how the position can turn very quickly against black. You know, this pawn is a goner after the knight comes here and the rook bears down on the c6 pawn. So e5 played, I think Nakamura's right to do that. Interesting move from Carlsen, he broke with e4. Now, really black has to exchange here, and then knight takes. Okay, with this exchange, Carlsen has managed to secure his knight on a beautiful square in the center of the board. And of course, He's looking at the c6 pawn. Now Nakamura played knight b6 here. After the game, he criticised that move. And he thought he should perhaps exchange here. And he said white's better, but he said that he thought that he should be completely fine. But I'm not so sure about that. Um, you know, maybe rook b1 is a good move, pressing here. I also like rook c1. You know, these, these are weak pawns. But it's not just that. You can see that black's pieces are way over on the queen side. I mean, white's position, I mean, look at these pieces. Beautiful centralization. And two weak pawns. And, I, you know, I would not say that black is completely fine here. Uh, what we can say for certain is that it's a very easy position for white to play. So anyway, knight b6 played. Actually, objectively, I'm not sure it's that bad, but probably Nakamura's follow-up is not great. Here, maybe he should just exchange on, uh, or take on a4. But, you know, when you're running a little short of time, I can understand why he didn't do that. You know, I think white has a couple of options. You can, you can chase the a-pawn with this, or go for d5. And, you know, that is a strong piece on the e4. Anyway, knight e8, definitely not a good move. Very interesting move from Carlsen. I was anticipating maybe something like rook d6, which I think not, not bad. But he swung over to g6. And suddenly he's introducing threats against black's king. And Nakamura was kind of distracted by this. Um, now, bishop takes... Not a good move because uh, I think King H7 looks good. Um, so Carlson exchanged. Now, if Knight takes, then he's simply a, a clear pawn up. 
So King H7. Now this was Nakamura's idea. He thought that he was sidelining White's rook. In fact, there seems to be no problem for this rook at all. Uh, short of time, he simply overestimated his chances with black here. And now you can see that Carlson is a clear pawn up. There is no threat to the A pawn. In fact, this is still vulnerable. And white's pieces, apart from this slightly odd looking rook on h4, in fact, white's pieces are fine. In fact, this rook plays an important part. You know, if g5, then we can just take this off. And now it's two pawns. So the rook isn't badly placed actually on h4. And maybe more to the point is that, you know, black's pieces aren't great here. So this is the game continuation. Rook b3, but now Carlsen is in complete control of the position. And they reach the time control, the rook came back into play, and there's nothing that black can do here. You know, this knight is not well placed, it's just a target. And so now Carlsen was two pawns up. It's a winning position. But his technique was superb. Let's see what happened. I mean, really, Nakamura can do nothing here. He has nothing to attack. White's position is rock solid here. Rook d1. OK, so he's guarding the first rank. Sometimes he might want to play the rook over. Um, you know, in this position, there is no particular hurry. It means that... Now that the first rank is guarded, rook a3 is simply not possible because of bishop b4 winning material. So in these positions, I think the most important thing to do is restrict black's play. That's rule number one. Don't rush and just restrict black's play. You, there's, you don't need to you know, advance your pawn so quickly. OK, knight c4 played. And Carlson just very keen to induce exchanges. If this knight is protected, then this is a very nice move, bishop d8. Um, if the rook comes across, well, you can just start advancing. You know, these knights, they're just sitting ducks in the centre of the board. Actually, they protect each other, but there's no flexibility. Or if rook d7 and knight c5 is embarrassing, you know, this rook really doesn't have a good place to go to after bishop d8. So Nakamura exchanged. Well, of course, Carlsen delighted uh, for more pieces to be exchanged from the board. Rook came behind the pawn. Look at this wonderful knight in the centre of the board, protected, solidly protected by the pawn. Another excellent move from Carlsen. So remember, the idea is restriction. If you can restrict your opponent's pieces, then there's zero counterplay, and then you can slowly chug forward. So the point is, the knight can no longer move into play via e5. Rook a2, well, actually there's no, no problem here. And now the king comes off the back rank, very nice. So again, just slowly advancing. Rook here, but there's no problem here because the second rank is covered by this beautiful knight. Rook a6, creeping forward. And now, an interesting idea, sometimes Rook h5 becomes an interesting move with the simple threat of knight g5 and this knight is vulnerable on g6. But just creeping forward with rook a6, good move. Uh, and of course, black can't go on the offensive because rook a7 is suddenly deadly. So, knight e7 played. And g4, next stage. No need to advance this one. Let's first of all improve our king position so it gives potentially the king the square. But also, we might want to advance this one and just prize open black's king. So the black's king is also a target. And you can see, well, all white's pieces just beautifully placed here. Now, if this knight comes out, I mean, there are many ways to win, but here's a typical exchanging sequence. White can exchange into a winning rook and pawn ending and well two pawns is just too much. So basically black is still completely restricted here. So rook b7 played and that snuffs out any counterplay. 
and knight c5. Again, this rook is just blocked out. The knight beautifully placed on c5. Sometimes it'll come into e6 um, to hassle, to, to hit the g pawn, sometimes coming into f8 as well. But for the moment, it just stays on, on c5. And Nakamura couldn't find anything but to offer an exchange of rooks here. So Carlson very happy to do that and play the rook to the seventh rank. You can see this knight e6 move looks strong. Knight e4 played, hitting the pawn on f3. No problem, king advanced. And here, another great move. You know, many people, I think, would play rook a7 here and maybe try to advance the pawn. But rook b4, much better. Much better to use this rook actively here, defending this pawn, but also looking at this side of the board and hassling the knight, of course. And there we go. So this plan of uh, just exchanging pawns on the king side and, and actually wanting to develop atta an attack on black's king sort of comes to fruition now. And that's why the rook is beautifully placed on b4, controlling this knight wonderfully. And now if pawn takes pawn, then knight e6 will win this pawn back. And, well, the king is already in danger, actually. So after g5, well, there are a few checks from Nakamura, but this is going absolutely nowhere. And here you can see the knight is dreadfully placed, controlled by white's rook. Um, there's a threat to play rook takes g2. Carlson just stopped that with rook g4. So the rook doing an excellent job protecting both pawns. So white still two clear pawns up and Nakamura decided to resign. Um, well, what might happen? Well, let's see. For example, after king f7, king f5 is a good move. Two ideas. One idea is simply to bring the king over to support the advance of the a-pawn. And the other idea is to attack black's king. And really, black can't defend against both those. So another really smooth victory for Magnus Carlsen. So he now leads the tournament, or increases his lead. He has two out of two. And behind him, uh, well, Caruana Karyakin drew Mamadiarov and Radiarbov drew not very interesting games. So Carol, uh, Magnus Carlsen now a clear point in the lead after two rounds.